So yes, um, I will be presenting my thesis uh, or part of my thesis, Scaling Marine and Water Management. So it's not uh, titled exactly the same way as the talk was, but uh, the issues I discuss is a lot about law or the interconnections between law and nature. Um, and yeah, I defended the thesis uh, uh, last Friday, so I've had time to, to think about these issues for a while. And now I'll try to uh, get them out in some kind of coherent uh, fashion. So I'll start with uh, talking about the SDGs uh, and how they're connected to my work. And of course, life below water and maybe above water as well is uh, highly relevant for this. Um, a lot of what I'll be talking about today concerns uh, marine spatial planning. Uh, so yes, uh, life below water is relevant, but planning is as a tool a lot broader than only water. So I guess that uh, life on land is also relevant as uh, it's important to capture the connections between land and sea with uh, marine spatial planning. But also I'll be talking about municipal planning and uh, sustainable cities and communities would be a relevant goal there. And of course, climate action and uh, affordable and clean energy are also relevant factors or relevant uh, parts or objectives that I think. Um, maybe I won't talk so much explicitly about them, but uh, I would say that marine spatial planning is a tool that uh, relates to all of these issues. And actually maybe all of the SDGs as planning is a tool that's supposed to sort of capture uh, the entirety of ocean uses. But I think I'll start by uh, um, setting the scene or giving an, giving an example of why I think this is interesting or what the issues are that I want to talk about. And this uh, in Swedish, uh, uh, this is usually talked about as the Danska Bajsvatnet, uh, but uh, in English, I guess the Danish sewage water uh, is more uh, adequate. So in late spring of 2020, a number of uh, major Swedish media outlets reported that the city of Copenhagen was going to discharge 290,000 square meters of unprocessed sewage to water uh, into the sound between Sweden and Denmark. And these planned discharges, they led to protests on both sides of the sound uh, from the highest political level on the government level in Sweden, and, but also regional levels, local levels and from NGOs. So all types of uh, um, stakeholders in the marine environment were uh, talking about this. And the fear was that um, the bathing waters uh, could be contaminated here in Sweden and in Denmark but also that the discharge would lead to algal blooming and have adverse effect on breeding fish and spawn, or breeding birds and spawning fish, both locally in the sound, but also in a broader Baltic context. And these discharges, they were stopped uh, subsequently, but the example highlights issues that are highly relevant for uh, the, the topic of my thesis. And this is the, the, the case of the sewage water shows how local decision making is intrinsically linked to national, regional and international processes as well. And that decisions that may be logical on a local scale can be problematic on other scales. So my thesis concerns or consists of two case studies. Uh, one concerning how the choice in level of management uh, for a specific resource that is a local level, regional, national or international level of management affects uh, which priorities and perspectives that become highlighted in that type, that management. The example used to illustrate this is the Swedish system for marine spatial planning. And the second case study concerns how geographical delimitations of ecosystems, legal delimitations of ecosystems affect management. And this focuses on the Swedish implementation of the Water Framework Directive. Uh, for this presentation, I'll focus on the first case study uh, as it is more clearly linked to the marine areas. 
Um, but obviously, freshwater management is also important uh, in coastal and marine water management. But I won't focus that much on all, as I try to keep it uh, more coherent, uh, maybe the presentation. But uh, to give you a background on where I come from or where the sort of where I start theoretically, I'll uh, provide a short background to my some of the theoretical starting points for the thesis. So one of the points of departure of the thesis is the idea of social and ecological systems as interconnected. These ideas have been developed within the realm of resilience theory, as well as earth system governance theories. And the basic idea is a break from the traditional division between the human and non-human or social and ecological systems. Humans, human systems are part of ecosystems and a separation between the two becomes then becomes arbitrary. And a central feature within both resilience and earth system governance theories is adaptive management or adaptive governance. Um, as I focus on sort of the legal mechanisms steering management, I will talk about adaptive management in this case and not the broader concept of governance. And adaptive management builds on the recognition that any system for management needs to be able to adapt to changing conditions, either human or natural, naturally induced changes, but our system needs to adapt. And this is a type of management that builds on experimentation and adaptation rather than a system where all the facts are known from the outset. And a central discussion within the field of law in relation to adaptive management is how law can foster such management while at the same time ensuring and upholding basic legal principles such as predictability and rule of law and legal certainty. I won't go too much into my sort of uh, theoretical thinking about these legal aspects, as uh, this may not be the crowd for that. But suffice it to say, I argue that if that adaptability needs to be built into the planning aspects of management, and if this is done, then the principles of, of these legal principles of rule of law and uh, legal certainty can be uh, ensured while still having uh, an adaptive management regime. And the question then becomes how to do this? How do we build uh, functional adaptive management? In this case, for marine planning or marine, the marine environment. Um, and as the title of the talk was How Law Shapes Nature, I think I should say something about that as well. Um, Ecosystems are complex and social ecological systems are even more so. Accounting for all different aspects of these systems in management is impossible. Rather, lawmaking entails a type of simplification of social ecological systems. This complex system needs to be, they become simplified to in a sense become legible for human administrative systems. And this process of simplification is, isn't simple as it may sound. It is rather a rather complicated and complex process. And it is important that those who are designing the management systems are attentive to complexities and interactions of social ecological systems. The case study I'll talk about today focuses on how too much simplification affects the possibilities of a functional adaptive management of coastal social ecological systems. If not enough of this, this complexity is reflected in management or in planning, uh, this will lead to a misrepresentation of the systems. And in the end, this will affect management outcomes as well. Uh, so uh, before I get too much into that, I think I'll first present how the study was performed and some of the prereq legal prerequisites uh, for marine spatial planning. Um, and in specific terms, I'll uh, discuss how the division of planning competence 
in the Swedish coastal areas affect priorities in marine and coastal water planning. Um, so here I've studied both the Swedish marine spatial planning system and the um, system for municipal planning in Sweden, which is uh, quite relevant as uh, I will soon show. So this uh, picture uh, is from the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management, and it shows some of the legal instruments covering uh, our marine areas. So as you can see here, the marine spatial planning regime covers an area that starts one nautical mile outside of the baseline. It doesn't cover the coastal waters, but it covers our entire territorial sea and exclusive economic zone. Municipal planning, on the other hand, covers land, uh, it covers both land and the coastal waters, and as well the territorial sea. So there's an overlap in planning competence in parts of the territorial sea. In addition to this, we have the Marine Strategy Framework Directive, which covers our entire marine areas, and also the Water Framework Directive, which, is, um, which covers freshwater and coastal waters in general. Um, so <clears throat> there are quite a few legal instruments covering this area and trying to capture maybe some of this complexity, but I will talk a bit about how well integrated they are with each other and uh, maybe the problems if they are not integrated enough. E enough. Um, but first, I think I'll start with how my study was performed, especially specifically this study, the first case study that I'm talking about today. So the first part of the study consisted of a review of the regulatory framework governing uh, national uh, marine spatial planning and municipal planning with quite a strong focus on the municipal planning aspects because well, the municipal planning system in Sweden is a bit um, unique in the European context, and I thought it was it needed some uh, careful attention to really discuss how what the limits and possibilities of municipal planning is or. The second aspect uh, or the second part of this study was. Uh, review of policy and planning documents. Here, uh, the investigation started with a review of the comprehensive plans of all Swedish coastal municipalities. There are 65 of those, at least 65 that have an overlapping planning area with the national marine plans. Uh, and particularly, I was interested in the opening statements of these plans, because that's where the municipalities express their overarching objectives and what they want to do with the municipality. Usually these are quite, uh, um, what do you say, broad statements about sustainability and uh, how sustainability will be reached in this municipality. And following that review or that study, I, I looked at the parts of the plans, uh, the specific, specific sections where coastal areas were covered. And following this initial review or study of the plans, I started to code the plans or the municipalities into different categories. Um, and following that, a smaller selection of municipalities were made, which I wanted to study more in depth. Um, in addition to this, I was also studying in this part of the process, uh, there was, I think, a, the first draft for marine plants that I was studying as well. The, the, the final proposed plants hadn't really been published yet when I was doing this part of the study. So when I'd, I'd done my selection of smaller municipal or, or a smaller number of municipalities, I continued to interview planners in these municipalities. And they were chosen in order to get um, a, as broad a selection of sizes, geographical locations, attitudes towards coastal areas that could be discerned from the planning documents. 
because I wanted to see different priorities and perspectives of municipal planning, both large municipalities and smaller rural uh, municipalities. Um, so the interviews with municipal planners were complemented with interviews uh, with planners on the regional level, because there are three regional coordinating agencies in the system at the county administrative board level. And as well, I did an interview with a planner at the Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management, who is central in the plan, the national planning process. The aim with this uh, three-tiered approach was to provide a more in-depth insights into municipal and national priorities in the planning processes. Um, the legal review gives an idea of what the limits of operation are, and the document analysis provides insight into the main objectives, while the interviews gives a more close knowledge about how and why planning decisions are made and what the main priorities actually are aside from those that can be discerned from the planning documents. <clears throat> and I think this was needed because planning documents, especially these comprehensive plans that I studied, are quite vague and uh, general. So um, I'll just uh, try to visualize the different scales and the differences between national and municipal planning. So the National Marine Spatial Planning covers the entire Swedish marine areas, excluding coastal waters. And the aim is to approach marine management from a holistic perspective with the ecosystem approach as an important planning tool. And as you can see, there are um, three planning areas, uh, the Gulf of Botnia, Botnia and the Baltic Sea and the Skagerrak Kattegat area. So these are quite large areas um, and uh, to compare this to a municipal plan, as you can see here, well, it, it doesn't really show, but this, this is the plan of Luleå, which is located somewhere around here. So this is the area that they plan. So it, this leads to quite different focuses and uh, um, there are quite a few, there are not that many possibilities for a municipality to include issues or uh, questions that are outside of the borders of the municipality. Um, they, they need to be sort of have a quite direct uh, importance for the municipality then. And even when there are such possibilities, the interest of the municipality is always placed in the foreground, this localized interest. I'll come back to that as well. And um, it should also be mentioned, I think, that municipal planning is regulated in the Planning and Building Act of Sweden, and marine spatial planning is regulated in the Swedish Environmental Code. And the Planning and Building Act has a more sort of exploitative focus. It's, it's focused on development, while uh, the Environmental Code could be said to be have a more environmental, maybe protective or conservation focus, or at least it has a more environmental focus than the Planning and Building Act has. So uh, then I'll try to give some examples from what I found in my analysis of municipal planning of coastal areas. The first one is about the scale of municipal planning. It's local. It's quite detailed and the plans are characterized by a high knowledge about local areas and how these can be used. However, as I mentioned earlier, a larger perspectives such as uh, marine ecosystems are not discussed to any great extent. And, and I think that one of the reasons uh, for, I mean, this, this is cause municipal planning is quite development oriented. And one of the reasons for the coastal areas being excluded from the national marine planning system is that this is where the municipalities have their most interest. This is where they want to develop and this is what they want to work with. The territorial sea is less of an interest for municipalities. And I think um, to me, this is one of the biggest problems with the marine spatial planning system in Sweden today. Uh, um, and Apart from this local scale and development focus, um, the perspective, or as I call it, the projection of municipal planning is also quite distinct. What I mean with this is 
what is placed at the center of attention in planning and what becomes a periphery. This map may look uh, a bit strange uh, to any of you who have ever seen a map, uh, especially a map of the south southern part of Sweden, but I think it illustrates quite well the perspectives of municipal planning and this projection, as I call it. This is from the comprehensive plan of Karlsham, and the point with turning the map upside down, as they've done here, is to show how important Karlsham is and how close it is to areas around the Baltic Sea. I mean, and as you can see then, Karlsham becomes placed in the center of attention. While if you look at Gothenburg, we have one connection to Fredrikshamn and that's about it. And Stockholm is, I mean, it's not even on the map, it's just somewhere up here. So it shows how you want to frame your municipality as an important node for transport in this case. And by doing so, other places are placed, or uh, towns or cities or municipalities are placed in a clear periphery. And this was, I mean, it, this transport was, was only one of these projections that I think I found. Another one was how, they, how the municipalities talked about their ports. Um, all, most of the coastal municipalities have a port, and the port is important for, for them. So, it's important to show that in the planning that this, this port is an important port. So for the municipality of Gothenburg, it's quite easy talking about the largest port in Scandinavia. So it's important. This is a, creating a rationale for developing and working with this port. Uh, for Malmö, it was the biggest port uh, for cars. It has in Boy, the biggest container port. Uh, Varberg has the biggest port in Sweden for sword wood products. Uh, Piteå has the biggest port for uh, uh, unprocessed uh, forest materials or wood products. So you see, they they you can always find one sort of uh, niche for your port that which makes it important. Even Tarnum has the most important port for in Sweden for. Uh, seafood or uh, a shellfish, maybe more specifically, and even though it's only a small yeti, it's a way of uh, sort of promoting your port as important and thus also creating uh, incentives for development, I think. And another, a, a third way of discussing the municipality was in terms of competition, where uh, a municipality is always in competition with neighboring municipalities or in competition with neighboring regions. The municipality of Lysekil, I think, highlights this quite uh, nicely in their comprehensive plan, where it, when they're trying to identify challenges for the municipality, they say that, well, the shopping fidelity is low. Our inhabitants go to the neighboring municipalities and their shopping malls to do their shopping, and this is bad. So this is a competition against uh, neighboring municipalities. While in another part of the plan, they discuss this in terms of regional cooperation, and then the neighboring municipalities were incorporated and included, and they wanted to build one of the biggest and most important business regions in this area then. So here, the, the competition was moved to a bit larger scale of the region, but still there is always a competition towards other regions then. So it's always, there's always an other that we have our competition towards. Um, so these are some of the interesting things I found in terms of the, this, what I call the projection of a municipal, municipality, which is always highly localized. And the final one, the thing that I was interested in was how the municipalities discussed the coast, what was important for them and how this was symbolized in planning. And here the coast as an attraction was important. It attracts tourists, businesses and inhabitants. It's always also frequently promoted, especially in the smaller municipalities as closely connected to the identity and the thing that was unique for a municipality. So this is always also a way of promoting the coastline and showing why it both it needs to be developed because it's what attracts people, but also it needs to be protected in some senses so that we keep 
keep um, attracting people. If it's too exploited, we won't attract people. But usually my impression was that when biological and natural values were discussed, it was in terms of as attractions for tourists and inhabitants and businesses. And I would say that all of these aspects together indicate a highly localized type of planning and one that at first sight at least doesn't really, it's not really compatible with the overarching aspirations of the national marine spatial planning system. So I'll say something about that as well. I've seen that uh, uh, there are some representatives from uh, the Swedish agency here. So I hope I, I won't misrepresent your work. Um, please tell me if I do. So and the National Marine Plans takes its departure from uh, this holistic use of the marine areas where all sectors need to be accounted for and the utilization of marine space should not exceed the limits of marine ecosystem. This planning is guided by an ecosystem approach and the aim is to provide to promote ecosystem services, but also growth of maritime in industries and the perspectives are by necessity broader than those of individual municipalities. And granted, the, the national plans, they also talk about attractive coastline and small scale fisheries, but they also apply a broader scale where they discuss the problems of overfishing and problematic aspects of highly exploited coastlines. In this sense, the national plans can move between scales a bit more than the municipal plans can but they can never have the detailed knowledge as the municipalities have of, of a specific area. Because this is quite, I would say, unique to every municipality to have the, the, the specific knowledge. Um, at least it's a lot more difficult, especially uh, since they do not cover the coastal areas. Even though it is in these areas that many of the important ecosystem features are located, and it also, it's also here that many of the activities or the pressures on the marine environment are located. So the coastal areas are really important to capture this holistic perspective of the, the marine environment. And in terms of this projection or how neighboring areas are treated, where I was talking about the municipalities always being in competition, the, the national marine planning, they, there have been quite a few initiatives to cooperate with neighboring countries, trying to learn and draw from each other's experiences, learn how they are implementing the ecosystem approach, etc. cetera. Um, however, in relation to the municipalities, my experience is that there is a bit less learning. The municipalities find the national plans to be a bit too crude, broad uh, to have a bit, the scale isn't really enough for municipal planning and in the national plans when they talk about municipal planning it's more in my experience in terms of well if they have appointed something specifically in the area then we can take this into account otherwise our plans will be guiding for the municipal planning um, and this is something that's conveyed not only by the uh, agency, but also in other meetings I've seen this. And it should be stated that in the legal process, from a legal perspective, the internal hierarchy between a municipal plan and the national plans has not been uh, set, really. It says that the plans should be guiding, but there, it, there are no requirements for a municipal comprehensive plan to follow or to be in accordance with the national plans. <clears throat> and I think that this raises an important issue as the, the international cooperation, I would say, is also contingent on each country having a sort of coherent planning internally. If the local authorities of planning are not on board with the national planning, then it's all of these international cooperation efforts will also be hampered by not sort of trickling down or what to say all the way down to the local areas and around the baltic sea there are a number of different authorities on different levels in charge of uh, planning so in short and just a map to show i like maps as you may have been able to or have you may have figured out already but this i think this shows 
the consequences of simplification, as I talk about. Um, we have 65 municipalities with local interest and local perspectives covering the coastal areas and parts of the territorial sea. Um, and then we have three national plan areas. Uh, and there's little interest from the municipalities, I would say, in these areas. Uh, and this is problem. This is a problem, I would say, if we want to capture the entire complexity of marine ecosystems and social ecological systems of coastal uh, and marine and coastal areas, because it's not included in the management. So the municipal plans may be adaptive in that they are uh, supposed to be re revised every now and then, and the same for the natural plans. But if they're not sort of connected, that, that this may be a problem. So what's the implications here? What, what am I talking about? Uh, from a municipal perspective, I think this picture is quite telling. One of the representatives from the regional authorities said that the municipality is like an ant looking up at the horse uh, when it tramples into the anthill. This was then the state planning the marine areas. It's a to total difference. I mean, it's a difference of perspectives. And the other way around them, from this holistic aspirations of the national marine plans, I think maybe this uh, Jackson Pollock um, mosaic can illustrate the complexity and also the maybe incoherence in municipal planning. It's quite messy. Each municipality has its own, its own interests, and there are, of course, initiatives for regional and municipal corporations, but I would say that they still have a highly regional perspective. Um, and I think that my time is running out, so I'll just uh, keep on. How do we reach this? A well-composed uh, mosaic of plans. Um, I believe that in order to create a functional adaptive management regime, um, legislation needs to be more attentive to these local social ecological systems than it is right now. As it looks, it doesn't really matter if the municipal plans are adaptive and the national plans are adaptive, if they don't inform each other and build on the knowledge of each other. Because then the picture becomes too simplistic, as I was talking about. So I would say that they need these two levels of planning need to be more integrated with each other. I would have said that a starting point would have been to let the national marine plans cover also coastal waters, because this would have forced a lot more interest from the municipalities in the national process. And uh, then I haven't even started to talk about integrating also the water framework directive, which I think is important because these are not separated systems. Uh, it's not, you can't really draw lines in that way. And that would also integrate the land sea interaction more. Okay, this was a really quick summary, summary but um, thank you so much for your attention.